Because Calicamera possesses a strange combination of anatomical features, it is said to be the platypus of crabs. The presence of certain features in this species, such as its large claws and swimming limbs, confirm that those features were present in the crab lineage up to 95 million years ago. It evolved during the Cretaceous crab revolution. This refers to a major diversification event of brachyurine crabs, nearly 80% of modern groups of crabs originated during this event. It lived in a tropical environment. Fossils are rarely preserved in tropical settings in comparison to other parts of the world, making this fossil an even more unusual discovery. An in-depth study of the crab's eyes indicated that it was an active predator living high in the water column. Japanese sponge crab can be found subtitally and on mudflats uncovered at low tide. It probably feeds on fragments of algae and other vegetation. It searches out a sponge and uses its keely to fashion a piece to the approximate size of its carapace, and then molds this in place. It will carefully cut a piece of sponge growing on a rock or remove some from the surface of a shell. It has been shown that the crab has a spatial memory and is able to find its way back to where a sponge previously removed from it has been cached. In another experiment, an octopus easily detected an unadorned crab but failed to locate a camouflaged one. In the crab's symbiotic arrangement with the sponge, it is unclear what benefit, if any, is obtained by the sponge. Spanner crab inhabits depths of 10 to 100 meters on sandy smooth substrata in which they bury themselves from where they attack small bottom-dwelling fish. When waiting for prey, it will cover itself with sand, but leave its eye and mouth parts sticking out to help detect its food. Offshore areas within this range in a subtropical or tropical environment serves as a habitat for it, but they must have ample sand for spanner crab to flourish, as covering themselves in sand is instrumental in their method of catching prey. It is a popular species of crab that gets fished, in Australia, 96% of the female crab doesn't get fished. In one location during spawning season, the decrease in females being hunted doesn't apply. Meaning that the specific area of Talos Beach is the focus of spawning migration. Crabs are generally covered with a thick exoskeleton, composed primarily of highly mineralized chitin. Behind their pair of keely, claws, are six walking legs and then two swimming legs. The crab breathes through gills on its underside, gills must be at least moist to work. Mottled purse crab has a distinctive appearance with a broad, flattened carapace and long, slender legs. They often have a reddish-brown or orange coloration. It is primarily nocturnal, foraging for food and engaging in reproductive activities under the cover of darkness. Colusia is a genus of Indo-Pacific pebble crabs of the family Leucosidae. The six species currently recognized were formerly classed as members of the genus Leucosia but were separated into Colusia in 2006 based on the fusing of segments 3 to 5 on the abdomens of the males and the three times axial coiling of the shaft of the first pleopod which bears a tufted lobe on its distal portion and has an elongated apical process. Brown pebble crab has a strongly convex, elongate carapace. Its outline is somewhat rhomboidal. The front edge of the carapace is slender and obtusely triangular, with a pointed postorbital that points upward at an oblique angle. It has stout ambulatory legs, with each section being cylindrical and fairly smooth. Yellowline arrow crab is one of a number of different invertebrates that are found living in association with sea anemone. 
The species is also notable for its propensity to decorate its body by attaching materials as camouflage, or if the attached organisms are noxious, to ward off predators through apisemitism. There have been a considerable number of reports regarding cleaning symbiosis among reef fish, moray eels, and squirrel fish. This is a somewhat unexpected relationship as moray eels and squirrel fish can be considered dangerous clients, because crabs are important elements of their diets. This behavior has only been observed in the natural environment in Brazilian waters but it is believed that this behavior also exists throughout its distribution. Japanese spider crab is known for its impressive size, with the largest individuals having a leg span of up to 3.8 meters and weighing up to 19 kilograms it holds the record for having the longest leg span of any arthropod. They have a distinctive appearance with long, spindly legs and a triangular-shaped body covered in a spiny carapace. They are scavengers and omnivores, feeding on a variety of prey including small fish, mollusks, and carrion. They are known for their longevity and slow growth rate. They have been reported to live for up to 100 years or more in the wild. Like other crustaceans, Japanese spider crabs undergo molting as they grow. During this process, they shed their exoskeleton to allow for growth. Molting is a vulnerable time for the crab, as it is soft-bodied until its new exoskeleton hardens. Great spider crab inhabit a variety of coastal habitats, including rocky shores, reefs, and seagrass beds. They are typically found at depths ranging from shallow intertidal zones to deeper waters. They have a distinctive appearance with a rounded, spiny carapac and long, slender legs. It has a red-brown rounded carapace up to 16 cm wide and has a leg span of up to 40 cm sometimes seaweed and sponges attached to its body. When breeding these crabs form groups of often greater than 100 crabs, breeding occurs just before winter molting when they are vulnerable to predation because of their soft shells. The large congregations make them less vulnerable. The crab is a scavenger, and is found in seaweed, reef and sand areas at depths of up to 820 meters. Decorator crabs have evolved the remarkable ability to camouflage themselves by attaching materials such as algae, seaweed, sponges, coral fragments, and other organic matter to their carapace and appendages. This helps them blend in with their surroundings and avoid detection by predators. Decorator crabs have specialized hooked hairs, called seedy, on their bodies that allow them to securely attach materials for camouflage. They use their claws to carefully position and affix the chosen items to their carapace and legs. These crabs are highly adaptable and exhibit complex behaviors when selecting and attaching camouflage materials. They may actively seek out specific types of objects to match their surroundings or modify their camouflage based on changes in their environment. Camouflaging with materials from their surroundings helps decorator crabs avoid detection by predators such as fish, birds, and larger crustaceans. By blending in with their environment, they can reduce the risk of being eaten. They need to periodically molt their exoskeletons to grow, which presents a challenge for maintaining their camouflage. After molting, they quickly begin to collect and attach new materials to their soft, vulnerable bodies until their new exoskeleton hardens. While decorator crabs primarily use camouflage for defense against predators, they may also use it when hunting for prey. By blending in with their surroundings, they can approach potential prey more stealthily, they play important roles in marine ecosystems as both predators and prey. Their camouflage behavior helps maintain the balance of predator-prey relationships and contributes to the overall diversity and stability of coastal habitats.
Snow crabs eat other invertebrates in the benthic shelf, such as crustaceans, bivalves, brittle stars, polychaetes and even phytobenthos and foraminiferans. Snow crabs also are scavengers, and aside from preying on other benthic shelf invertebrates, they prey on annelid worms and mollusks. Males typically prove to be better predators than mature females, and prey type depends upon predator size, with the smallest crabs feeding mainly on amphipods and ophiuroids, while the largest crabs feed mainly on annelids, crustacean decapods, and fish. Cannibalism is practiced at times among snow crabs, most frequently by intermediate-sized females. Yellow moon crab is commonly encountered in sandy and muddy shores, especially near seagrass beds from the intertidal zone to a depth of 50 meters they are usually nocturnal and spend the day buried in the substrate just below the surface, creating breathing channels to the surface of the sand. They hunt small shellfish, worms and other animals. During the night, they are known to take other crabs. When threatened, yellow moon crab often draws its legs up under the overlapping edges of the carapace and appears to sham death, this may make it difficult for a predator to dismember the crab. Occurring in the intertidal zone to a depth of 50 meters, smooth box crab has a carapace of about 15 centimeters, indistinctly rugose on the anterior half, with wavy lines edging the posterior. It is active during the night hours, and is able, when threatened, to swiftly burrow beneath the sand. It feeds mainly on mollusks such as clams, steadying them with its legs and then, using its pincers, either prizing the valves apart or breaking them. The carapace of this species curves downwards to protect their legs, this in combination with their large front claws allows this species to protect their vulnerable appendages and the front of their body from predators. During the day, reef box crab remains buried in sand with only the area around the eyes protruding. It emerges at night to hunt for prey, and can rebury itself in the substrate efficiently and fast if danger threatens. It is a predator, and largely feeds on bivalve and gastropod mollusks, as well as hermit crabs. It has a specially adapted right cella which it uses to break open the shell of its prey, for this purpose, it has a large accessory tooth located at the base of the hinged part of the claw, which is located opposite a flat plate on the fixed part, the two working together like a vise. After breaking open the shell, it uses its left pincer, which is longer and more pointed than the right, to pick out the soft tissues. The Jonah crab inhabits waters along the east coast of North America from Newfoundland to Florida. It possesses a rounded, rough-edged carapace with small light spots and robust claws with dark brown-black tips, it is the closest relative to the European brown crab in the western Atlantic. The Jonah crab is known to move to areas of preferred temperature for behavioral thermoregulation. The preferred temperature of this animal changes depending on the temperature to which it is acclimated. The estimated average preferred temperature is 15 degrees Celsius because Jonah crabs are a strongly preferred prey item for gulls, their survivorship is highest in deep water. However, some crabs will forage at shallower depths and in the intertidal zone, where food is more abundant. Due to the increased growth rate of crabs who forage at shallow depths and the higher survivorship of crabs who forage in deep water, both behaviors have a roughly equivalent effect on fitness. Calico crab lives at depths of up to 45 meters on sandy and muddy substrates. It often carries the sea anemone caliactus tricolor on its back, or lies buried in the sand, with only its eyes exposed. Reproduction occurs in summer, as shown by the occurrence of buried females. The eggs are held by the female until they hatch, there are five planktonic zoea stages. The species grows to 8 cm across the carapace, which is covered in large patches of red color, 
which may join up into lines or other patterns. The spots are outlined in a darker color, in some crabs, only the darker rings are visible. Cuban stone crab loses its limbs easily to escape from predators or tight spaces, but their limbs will grow back. The crab only molts at night or in night-like conditions due to the crab being extremely vulnerable to predators without the protection of its shell. If the crab is becoming too large for its shell and the sun is up, the crab releases a hormone from a gland located on one of its eye stalks called the X organ. This hormone prevents the crab from molting from its shell until it finds a safe place to molt or it has become dark enough outside to molt in safety. The Tasmanian giant crab feeds on carrion and slow-moving species, including gastropods, crustaceans, and starfish. Cannibalism also occurs. They breed in June and July and the female carries the 0.5 to 2 million eggs for about four months. After hatching, the planktonic larvae float with the current for about two months before settling on the bottom. The species is long-lived and slow-growing, juveniles molt their carapace every 3-4 year and adult females about once every 9 years. This greatly limits the breeding frequency, as mating is only possible in the period immediately after the old carapace has been shed, and the new is still soft. Crucifix crab inhabits shallow water, on both rocks and sandy bottoms. Mating takes place between a hard-shelled male crab and a soft-shelled, freshly molted female crab. The male takes up a guarding cradle position before the female molts, straddling her and gripping her with his ambulatory legs. He dismounts while she is molting, helping her to detach the old shell, before adopting the cradle position once more. Copulation is initiated a few hours later, the male turns the female over with his kelepeds and walking legs. She then positions herself underneath him, but facing in the opposite direction, with her abdomen extended and he inserts his gonopods into her genital openings. This position is maintained for about seven hours, during which time the male may walk around with the female attached. Atlantic blue crab inhabits a variety of coastal habitats, they are urohaline, meaning they can tolerate a wide range of salinity levels. They have a distinctive appearance with a blue-green carapace and claws, and white or yellow markings on their legs. They have paddle-shaped rear swimming legs and powerful claws used for feeding and defense. They are omnivorous scavengers, feeding on a variety of prey including small fish, mollusks, crustaceans, algae, and detritus. They are economically important as a valuable seafood resource. They are harvested commercially for their meat, which is considered a delicacy in many coastal regions and is used in various dishes such as crab cakes and crab boils. They play important roles in estuarine ecosystems as both predators and prey. They help regulate populations of smaller organisms and contribute to nutrient cycling through their feeding activities. Due to the increased farming scale and breeding of Portunus tritoberculatus, the farming environment of the Gazami crab has greatly decayed. It has also diminished the crab's immune system which has led to the decline in its ability to fight off diseases. This can be observed by looking at the toothpaste disease along with the emulsification disease that is caused by Vibrio. These two diseases have caused a great deal of damage to Portunus tritoberculatus which has created severe economic losses and deprivation to the industry. These diseases have ultimately reduced the comfort and healthy evolution of the Gazami crab's farming industry. Blue swimmer crabs stay buried under sand or mud most of the time, particularly during the daytime and winter, which may explain their high tolerance to ammonium and ammonia. They come out to feed during high tide on various organisms such as bivalves, fish and, to a lesser extent, macroalgae. They are excellent swimmers, largely due to a pair of flattened legs that resemble paddles. 
they cannot survive for long periods out of the water. This crab commonly enters estuaries for food and shelter. Its life cycle is dependent on estuaries as the larvae and early juveniles use these habitats for growth and development. Prior to hatching, the female moves into shallow marine habitats, releases her eggs, and the newly hatched zoea one larvae move into estuaries. During this time, they feed on microscopic plankton and progress from the zoea 1 stage to the zoea 4 stage and then to the final larval stage of megalopa. This larval stage is characterized by having large kelepeds used to catch prey. These crabs are commercially important throughout the Indo-Pacific, where they may be sold as traditional hard shells, or as soft-shelled crabs, which are considered a delicacy throughout Asia. It is fished heavily and almost exclusively for meat consumption in the Persian Gulf, with the females sold at higher prices than males. These characteristics, along with their fast growth, ease of larviculture, high fecundity, and relatively high tolerance to both nitrate and ammonia, makes this species ideal for aquaculture. Primarily a carnivore, found in marine waters and intertidal zone by juveniles, three-spot swimming crab inhabit sandy to muddy substrates. It is a harmless crab, but being pinched by its claws can be painful. Periscope crab lives in shallow sandy and muddy areas, especially in bays and river mouths, in depths up to 70 meters it is suggested the long eye stalks allow the crab to move the eyes above its body and raise them into clearer water above turbid silt, and to see further. It is consumed by coastal inhabitants in some countries but is only occasionally caught. At night they have been found swimming near the surface and may be attracted by lights. Orange mud crab is a commercially important species of mangrove crab. It is one of several crabs known as the mud crab and is found in mangrove areas from Southeast Asia to Pakistan, and from Japan to Northern Australia. Along with other species in the genus Scylla, it is widely farmed in aquaculture using wild-caught stocks. They can be differentiated from other species of Scylla by having blunted spines on the dorsal distal corner of the palm of the claw, and by the rounded frontal lobe spines with shallow separations in between the eyes. Mangrove swimming crab usually forage at night feeds on many bivalves and slow-moving crustaceans. It is found in intertidal areas of mangrove swamps, consisting of Rhizophora mucronata zone and mangrove forests. The crab is known to use as landmarks to locate its refuges using direct shortcut paths. Carapace round with five anterolateral teeth. Carapace with three pairs of gastric ridges which is perfectly smooth. Male has long and thin first pleopod, which gradually tapering to tip. Pacific golden crab differs from all species of the genus in color pattern, with the anterior part of the body purplish rather than reddish. In addition to color pattern, it also differs in having compressed rather than depressed dactyli on the walking legs, also, the hepatic region of the carapace in chasen granulatus is coarsely granular, whereas it is smooth in chasen bicolor. Juvenile specimens differ from adults in many features, the teeth of the carapace are much larger and sharper, there is a sharp spine on the carpus of the keloped and a distal spine on the merus of each walking leg, plus the legs are longer and slenderer. Red deep sea crabs are omnivorous scavengers, feeding on a variety of prey including fish, cephalopods, other crustaceans and detritus. They are also known to consume carrion. Little is known about its reproductive habits, but like other crabs, they likely reproduce by laying eggs, with females carrying fertilized eggs attached to their abdomen until they hatch into larvae. They are commercially harvested for their meat, which is considered a delicacy in some regions. They are typically caught using traps or pots set on the seafloor. This species has adaptations to life in the deep sea, including the ability to withstand high pressures and low temperatures. They have relatively slow metabolisms compared to shallow water species. Atlantic leopard crab, 
also known as lady crab, have a distinctive appearance with a somewhat flattened, oval-shaped carapace and long, slender legs. They are typically light brown to olive green in color, with dark spots or markings on their carapace and legs. These crabs are primarily nocturnal, becoming active at night to forage for food. During the day, they may seek shelter under rocks or burrow into the substrate to avoid predators. They play important roles in estuarine ecosystems as both predators and prey. They help regulate populations of smaller organisms and contribute to nutrient cycling through their feeding activities.